What is up, everybody? My name is Adri Norris. And I am Kenya Mahogany Fashaw. And we would like to welcome you to this evening's untitled Bodies of Liberation. We have a fabulous show for you guys tonight. I'm super excited, Audrey. Like, we have poetry, we have dancers, we have capoeira dancers, we have um, a little bit of, you know, mono well, acting, you know, a monologue. Um, and so, so much more um, prepared for tonight. So I'm super excited. Um, and yeah, I don't know. What else? What else do we have? Well, we also have on deck uh, some information about a cultural element that many of us will not know about. So you're about to learn some things about Brazilian culture. And we have a panel discussion at the end. So make sure you stay all the way through uh, and catch this amazing conversation that is about to take place. So I want to bring the title that we are doing tonight, because I don't think we shared that. Our title for the evening is called Bodies of Liberation. And we are teaming up with Senga Nanguri, who is the featured artist in the gallery, to express, um, you know, those connections uh, with her art and our art. So we're excited to be able to connect and share what we come up with for tonight. Um, I'm super, super excited for the panel discussion, like Audrey said, um, kind of touching on, on Black bodies, or Black bodies, bodies of liberation, also Black bodies of liberation. Um, but yeah, super excited about that. I think what we have coming up next is Mo Graham, who is an extraordinary artist herself, and she's actually going to be doing, you know, nice offbeat walk tour, right? Yeah, and basically introducing us to the artwork of Senga Naguri and giving us her take on how she feels about the art and maybe give you a little different way of thinking about and interpreting the artwork. Right, so I'm excited to hear what she has to say. So you guys stay tuned for Mo Graham as she gives you that art tour. And after that, we have a couple of my pieces that I would love to share with you guys. So we will tune in soon. Hey everybody, my name is Mo Graham and this is the Offbeat Art Tour. We are in the Topologies exhibit with Senga Naguti's work and I'm super excited to be here today because Senga creates artwork that really just speaks to my soul. She has a way with using materials and color and concepts and merging those three elements together to give viewers an experience that is both emotional, um, it gives us a opportunity to be inspired um, to do some really fun experimental things with their work, but also to really dive deeper into our own personal experiences. And so I'm just really grateful to be able to talk about her work today with you. This first piece that I picked was Inside Out. And what I really love about it is not only the way that she's using nylon and color and the way that she's manipulating these materials to be able to tell a story, but really the internal concept of what it means to have a crown and to wear a crown. As a mixed race woman born into a black family and black household, uh, growing up, I had a really hard time connecting with my own hair and understanding the power and the beauty that comes with having hair like mine. Or a term that's been brought to life again in pop culture is uh, the queen, yas, queen. And I think it's, um, it's something to really think about because it's not just, it's not just yas, queen, or it's not just pointing out that we are all queens because while that is true, it is also this, um, the feeling of being empowered by this crown that you were born with and honoring what it means to really have and hold what you were born with. And when I look at the materials in this piece and I think about the way that she illustrates this topic, it's not just a sculpture hanging on a wall. We're, we're really seeing these ideas of tension and, and nodding. Black hair is a cultural ritual of, of braiding and, and nodding and intentionally kneading and twisting and all of that coming together to represent a form of excellence, right? And so thinking about this work um, and thinking about my own experiences, 
I really am grateful to be able to experience this in person instead of just on a computer because there's just, there's so much here that really is an ode to the culture of the black woman's crown and the pride that comes with that. And when I think about what we have here tonight, I mean, we are seeing a wide variety of excellence and the women in this show tonight are really just blowing minds and to see that come together in this particular space with this artwork, I think what we really get to experience and what we should all be really excited about is this display of black excellence. We are here for the second piece, which is only love saves the day. And there's a lot to be excited about for this piece, but I specifically chose it because on January 6th in our country's capital, we experienced domestic terrorism in a way that our generation has never seen. And the complexities of that experience for each individual person are vast. And when we look at this piece behind us, I think it is just not only beautiful and elegant, but truly does a great job of illustrating some of the tensions and the, the fragileness of what our world is right now. The contrast of what is black and what is white, the duality of that conversation is apparent in this piece, but even in concept, when we think about black lives in this country today, um, and we think about people of color and what was at stake in our election in 2020, and what we saw on January 6th, it really does highlight how fragile we are as a country right now. Our character is at stake, our empathy is under attack. We have a lot of people who are lacking consideration for those outside of themselves. And I think it's really important to look at not only just ourselves, but also to look at artwork as a means for, um, for reflection and opportunities for us to go within and do some unpacking and asking ourselves some questions. What kind of tensions are you feeling right now in your own worlds, whether that be an internal battle, whether that battle be external, live it life outside of you, whether that be a battle within your own community. This is a time when we really need to challenge the depth of our empathy and the depth of our consideration. How far are you willing to go to make space for other people and to extend your love and your consideration for those around you and the people that you interact with and the people that you don't interact with. Because what 2020 taught us was that every individual action or word has an impact. Words mean things. Your actions have an impact and a ripple effect that shoot far beyond what we could ever realize. And so when I saw this piece, I got a little emotional because I thought about how difficult it can be to not only love yourself and to be okay with who you are and to be okay with your own circumstances, but also understanding the power that we have when we find strength in our own circumstances and in our own being. When I look at this piece, there's just, it, there's so much of a complexity. It's, it's layered. We're seeing these, we're seeing things expand outside of the focal point. We're seeing a tension that is, that is so, so deep. And 
it, you can't really tell at your first glance, but when you really dive closer into the work, the black nylon is knotted and tied and tangled and it sits behind this ivory film. And just think about that. What it means to be entangled and hidden behind your exact opposite being. And then after you see this darkness expand outward far beyond this ivory plane. That darkness that we might feel or that we might be or that we might hold for ourselves, it can expand. Blackness must expand, it has to. But also there is light, there is a way. White is not bad, neither is black. They coexist together. The duality is existent regardless of if we enjoy it or not. And so consider your opposite, consider yourself. A phrase that I like to use very often is to empathize with you and them. As we engage with artwork and as we engage in this space tonight, as we engage in the creative, um, the creative expression that we're seeing in Untitled this evening, I hope that you carry with you the question, what is the depth of your own empathy? And what are you willing to give up to make space for people who always belonged in the same spaces that you occupy on a regular basis? So with that being said, uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Senga, you speak to my soul. I, I love you so much. You don't know me, but we have a relationship and we are best friends, even if you don't know it. And for everybody else, enjoy this evening. May you walk away from Untitled feeling enriched and empowered to be your most wonderful and creative self. Thank you so much. intimidating on purpose. This surface was never meant to be an over-sexualized ass fantasy, but being modest, the structure of this goddess is infinite. Not your experiment, but they still try to rip us, strip us of their humanity, and when we scream insanity, they have the nerve to call us a calamity. <laughs> Same old song. It's hard to feel black body's pain when it's always masked as being strong, but don't get me wrong. Their strength that proceeds with this melanin so dark, sweet, thick, and deep. Black bodies have their own galaxy, drastically curving to the wind naturally, so how could this colorful spectrum 
be labeled as a catastrophe. Find the beauty in its creation. Black bodies deserve more liberation and less humiliation. Black bodies, black bodies. Won't you see these black bodies? Won't you see these black bodies? Black bodies, black bodies. <laughs> dip it into the color of mahogany. I take that same paintbrush and begin to paint a smile on my face, making sure that I look closely in the mirror so that I can fill in all those blotches of abandonment and abuse. No excuse, just cover, girl, girl. Cover up those black-headed secrets you've had hidden inside your pores for years. Or try Maybelline, maybe lean to the left. Maybe they'll miss your missteps. Inhale, breath. Cause I know God is working, so I smile. 
I smile. What's up, y'all? I hope y'all enjoyed that piece. Um, yes, I'm so excited. It debuted today, so I'm super excited about that. Um, the first piece, I just want to shout out. Monique Brooks Roberts on the violin is ridiculous. Thank you so much, Mama, for coming in and basically giving that piece so much life. Um, so she is super dope. Shout out to Monique. Brooks Roberts, shout out to everybody in the, in the in the chat too. Carrie Joy, I see you, boo. Shout out to you. Um, Sasa, I see Sandeep. I saw so many people on. So I, I'm so happy that you guys are tuning in right now. Um, thank you so much for that. That smile piece. Um, I definitely had Sangha's pieces and her art in it. I felt that um it felt it felt like the piece was a masking, which is Basically, her, her whole exhibit is called Mask Taping. And the piece is a masking of a smile under depression. And I felt like it just coincided so perfectly together. And so to have the permission to have some of her pieces in my video and to be inspired by her um, doing so was so beautiful. Um, the inspiration by the pieces that she has um, in the gallery called Collaborators, um, dealing with sand and, and you know, pantyhose like it reminded me of bodies um black bodies so black bodies um was was definitely curated and inspired by just just all of her artwork in there and and shout out to mo graham because she broke it down right mo graham is super dope um shout out to you mo graham for breaking all that down um man uh blackness has to expand was my favorite so i love it i love that 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 you did that so thank you guys for tuning in i have a couple of more segments um, that I hope that you guys enjoy. The next segment coming up is called um, Cages, I believe. And Cages is a monologue that I have written from a short um, micro script. And um, basically I have the beautiful lady speech, Sankofa, who will be performing this monologue on Cages and she does a beautiful job. Um, and up next, we have some dancers that are amazing. They're just not dancers, they're goddesses. Um, and they do their thing so elegantly. Sunshine and Aubrey Martin Fullwood are gonna give you guys um, a nice uh, interpretation of dance to Sangha Nuguti's art um, to a beat that I actually composed. So I'm pretty excited about that. So please stay tuned y'all. Remember not to go anywhere. And I hope y'all are enjoying the show. Black woman is both a multifaceted cultural identity and a powerful social construct. It includes women of the African diaspora. Black women have sometimes been seen in stereotypical ways, resulting in an increased risk for them. But they have also been important leaders throughout human history. A life tip. A life tip can't tell you anything about me. Only I can tell my story. Before all this went down, life through a black woman was already hard. To be a black woman in America is to be resented, challenged at every turn, overwatched and second guessed, treated with scorn and even envy. You weren't allowed out of the cages they kept trying to keep us in. The feelings of inadequacy are often our, our truth. And it, it doesn't even matter how you act. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how, how nice. It doesn't matter how, how calm. It doesn't matter how level-headed and understanding you are. My skin color determines my fate before I speak. You will never know what it's like to be treated as less than or less desirable, or, or more aggressive. I'm labeled an angry black woman just because I have an opinion. A black woman's energy is drained with trying to keep up with 
not being too much and never never ever being enough no no stop it no get away from me get away from me it's your fault america because you refuse to see me well can you see me now america it's just me and you america and i'm i'm tired of fighting i'm tired of having to be strong all the damn time my strength is not determined by how much pain and trauma i can endure from you america you stole from me you destroyed everything i cared about you lied to me you told me that i was part of the land of the free <laughs> red white and blue lights flashing, not to save us, but to prey on us. I've been entrapped all my life, dealing with your double oppression all my life, having to prove that my life matters. My life matters. The black woman matters. Do you hear me, America? The black woman matters. She is a goddess. We are rulers of the universe. We are infinite spirits. And I, I'm going to shine forever. Black women, a piece of advice. Never let this country's cruel systems keep you locked up in its cages. Because its only plans are to bury you. But as for me, I'd rather be buried in the ocean with my ancestors who jumped from ships because they knew that death, death is always better than bondage.
For this month's Untitled, we are exploring this idea of bodies of liberation, and I thought it fitting to bring in this martial art that I've been practicing for the last 15 years called capoeira. It's an Afro-Brazilian martial art, and it originates with the previously enslaved peoples of Brazil. With capoeira, there is a religion called candomblé, and one of the songs in capoeira that I've always loved, which is kind of a link to candomblé, is this song called Haina do Mar, also known as Mora Yemanja. about the goddess of the ocean. So for this painting, I wanted to make sure that I paid homage to this deity and this song that has always inspired me. My process began with the computer. I started off with photographs and with 3D models. And because this is a person who doesn't actually exist, I kind of had to invent her into being. So I used as many references as I could from religious imagery and iconography, as well as just my own imagination, and created this figure who is significantly larger than life, receiving the offerings from her followers. From there, I sent the image off to the print shop, and I took that printed image and I glued it onto the board that I would be painting on. Now, of course, I love painting. I love painting in watercolor. So the next step is to create a surface upon which I can do so. I use these materials called absorbent ground and fiber paste. That's a mixture of both. And when I put them onto just about any surface, it creates a surface that's almost like paper. It's very absorbent and it allows the watercolor to sink into the surface. Whereas uh, the glued surface that I'd had previously would basically act as a resist. So you get to see me figure things out, figure out the shadows, the colors, the lighting, the shades, everything to create this image. And it's an interesting process. It's a fun process, at times a frustrating process. And I cannot wait to show you the final product. So, thank you so much for staying here, staying tuned. I saw so many people in the Facebook, so many people in the YouTube, so many, so much love in the chats. Sandeep, what's up? Capoeira crew in the house. What's going on? Um, Carrie Joy, everybody who has been participating and communicating with us thus far. Um, thank you so much. So, for my segment, um, I wanted to explore ideas of. Um, Blackness that is outside of the United States. And so for me, that is Brazil. Oddly enough, I've never been. But um, as I said in the video, I've been doing capoeira for like the last 15 years. And uh, I'm just super fascinated by so many aspects of Brazilian culture. So that is the thing that I'm bringing to you. Um, the page that I started in the video is right behind me. So got it done. Yes. And um, so moving forward, we have uh, up next a capoeira demo. We have Orisha dance, and then we are going to have some words from Dr. Rachel Harding, who is going to tell us about Candomblé, which is the religion that I mentioned also in the video. And once all of that is over, please stay tuned for the panel discussion uh, that is coming up next. Shout out to Kenya Fashaw for her amazing part in um, this show, and I'm just so honored to be working with her. And yeah, can't wait to see what everybody has to say in the panel. So please stay tuned.
Hello, I'm Dr. Rachel Harding. I'm a historian of religion, and I'm here to talk to you about Candomblé, an Afro-Brazilian religion that developed in the 19th century in the northeast of Brazil, in the state of Bahia. Candomblé was created by enslaved Africans from West and Central Africa who brought with them to the Americas their cosmologies, their rituals, and their orientations to the world. Like most indigenous religions, Candomblé cultivates balance and reciprocity and the connectedness of human beings to all other forms of life in the universe visible and invisible. The religion is organized along lineages that correspond to ethnic groups and ritual families who were taken during the slave trade from Africa to Brazil. The nations of Candomblé are roughly analogous to the way Christians think of denominations, the Yoruba, the Congo Angola, the Jeje or Dahomian, and the Caboclo or indigenous Amerindian nations of Candomblé are among the most common. One of the central concepts of the religion is Orisha, Vodun, Inkisi. These are terms that vary depending on the ritual language of each lineage, but that all refer to the divine nature of the universe, the natural forces, the sacred energy that is in water and fire and earth and air and plants and trees and animals and people. Candomblé is a ritual that connects people of African descent to the wisdom and strength of our ancestors. It is a religion of resistance. For two centuries, it has been a religion that nurtures and celebrates the humanity and the sacredness of Black people. It is also a radically inclusive and welcoming religion. And as it is practiced traditionally in Bahia, Candomblé is a religion that centers and honors the leadership of women.
Hey, that was beautiful. Thank you guys and welcome back. Um, I am super excited because now we get to share with you a panel discussion of some of the artists that you've seen tonight. Um, and we have Miss Rachel Harding, Lady Speech Sankofa, and Sunshine on our panel joining us with me and Audrey. And we're excited because basically the theme of everything um, that we were saying um, is talking about bodies of liberation. And I know that um, I've asked a couple of these ladies, I asked Lady Sankofa and um, Lady Speech Sankofa and Sunshine to come on because I know these are two uh, body positive women um, that are heavy in the community and that um, are black women, of course, and, and, and talented black women that I know has a, a voice in all of this, right? Um, so, and I know Miss Rachel Harding has a voice in it and I'll let Audrey, cause Audrey, she's your guest that, come, that came onto the panel. So I'll let you go in on Miss Rachel Harding. Yes. Yeah, first and foremost, um, I want to thank you for coming and for just helping me with this aspect of things. I've been fascinated by Candomblé ever since I learned that, well, number one, that it was like an Afro-Brazilian religion, um, its links to capoeira and all of that. But also, once I discovered that this is religion that is predominantly run by women, I was like, hold up, wait a minute. And so um, I do not have the time to really delve into the entirety of it. So uh, thank you so much for joining us and helping us explain what Candomblé is about and really your take on how it applies to this notion of bodies and liberation. Good evening, everybody. It's a joy for me to be here. And I'm just really moved by how much extraordinary art and power and creativity there is in this community of Black people, of Black women in uh, Colorado. You all are just fantastic. So um, this was my first time seeing the whole show and I was just thrilled. I'll just say briefly, um, I, was, I was just so impressed with the way that you all included these aspects of spirituality, these aspects of the fullness of our beings and our bodies, our voices, it was just every part of the creative experience was represented so well. And Audrey, your work, um, we're looking at it behind you. The water, yes, my Meninia, one of the great leaders, Ialorishas of Candomblé who was born at the end of the 19th century and lived into the 1980s. Thank you so much for representing so well, all of you, the diasporic greatness of Black women. Yeah, so that's awesome. I, I, I want to um, basically extend it out to Lady Speech Sankofa and Sunshine, if you guys want to speak on this amazing experience of Black women collaborating. I think the theme of the night is um, you know, Black women matters. My life matters, right? Black women matter. So I just want you guys to elaborate on that and just, you know, feel free to, to speak your mind on whatever. Oh, speech, you're on mute, love. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Um, we're celebrating bodies and liberation. And when you think about Black people, um, from the moment colonialism came to us, we always fought for liberation. We've always been bodies in liberation. We were never silent and we never went willingly with anyone or with anybody. So every single act of breath, every act of cooking, every act of doing hair, every single act a black person does is an act of liberation. Even the acts of uh, laying into our vices, even the not so good acts. We are liberating ourselves from stereotypes. We are liberating ourselves and allowing ourselves to be full human. Every aspect of blackness, every reach, every breath, every moment we spend in these bodies existing is an act of liberation. Every single moment. No matter if we deem it as something that is excellent or productive by Western society or Western standards or Western society, it doesn't matter. A black body living is a body in liberation. A black body existing is a body in liberation. A black body creating is a body in liberation. A black body worshiping is a body in liberation. When you want to see liberation in action, look to black bodies always. Colonialism tried everything 
to kill us. And yet we are still here. <laughs> Beautifully said. We ain't going nowhere, y'all. <laughs> I have a question um, that came into the chat and I want Sunshine to answer this for me. Um, Natasha said, when and where do you feel most liberated? When I am able to be in my body. Um, doing the piece that I did was very personal because our bodies have the resilience to stay there and to go through it and hit the bottom and rise again many, many, many times. But sometimes the body gets tired and the spirit gets weary and we want to escape from this shell of a self so that we can go that, to that place where we feel like we are in our bodies. And doing that piece and being invited on this was very important for me to do only because I have been so out of touch with my body. Um, not just with COVID, but you know, we all are dealing with things that colonialism brought in, you know, and, and we are brainwashed. So a lot of our families are not ready. They're not ready to live in this body. So it's on me. I feel like it's on me. I have to be the ones to carry my progeny forth, knowing that they can be in their body and that they won't be punished for it and they won't continuously be killed for it for generations beyond and i feel like it was my responsibility to be in my body so that's where i go i just go back in my body i forget about the the woes of the world and everything on my shoulders from having a broke broken down family structure and now having to start myself from another foundation that i have to i have to do it because not only are my babies dependent on it but there's a whole nation dependent on it and this crown on my head is not just something that's going to be here for, for me. I have to carry this crown so that I can put it on my daughter's head and her, her daughter's head. So where I go is back in my body to answer mm -hmm. your question. Definitely, I, I dig that. Look within. Did anybody else wanna chime in on that? Yeah, I wanna speak on that a little bit. First off, I wanna shout out to uh, Dr. Rhonda Coleman who did the Orisha dance. Um, she did a dance to Yemanja, who was the goddess of the ocean, the seas. And uh, she, her capoeira nickname is uh, Contramestra Onda Mansa, which is the gentle wave. And so it just felt so fitting to have her do Yemanja. Um, but to go back to the question though, uh, I feel like, yeah, anytime that I move, you know, um, anytime that I use my body, use my voice, not just to share information with people, but to sing, to like, just kind of get everything out, you know, um, those are those moments in which I feel the most liberated. Um, and I feel like everything that I do is as embodied a practice as I can make it. I've taken myself out of the, the so corporate structure you know, um, because that was not something that was working for me and this body, like offices are cold. I don't like that. I'm a Caribbean, like this is now my body likes to function. Um, and so in doing so, I get to use my body and my mind and my voice to create beautiful things. And it's like, it is the ultimate. It is, you know, the thing that allows me to keep wanting to wake up and keep wanting to do, um, everything that I'm doing, you know, every morning. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I would say for myself, the same thing, you know, I feel like um, being liberated is being to create, being able to create, being able to live in my truth and uh, who I am and, and convey that along to someone else that may be able to relate to that. And so that's why it was such an awesome, like, connection that we had all these beautiful Black women on this show, on this panel. I felt like it was a celebration of just that. Um, not not needing your permission, like I said, um, my body is freely able to go where it wants to go, but I'm celebrating it. Um, and it was a great celebration with all you ladies. Like you guys did such a wonderful job tonight. So thank you. Yes, thank you. And one thing I wanna say, um, I've, all of us have been kind of tapping into this. We have this tendency to use the word black as opposed to African-American. And for me, the reason I choose that word is because it connects me to the diaspora. 
you know, I am Caribbean by birth, like I am naturalized an American citizen. So instantly, like I'm not strictly African American. Um, my ability to connect to Brazil, my ability to connect to South America and to all of the places that we have wound up um, to me is because, but for one stop on a slave ship, I could have ended up in any of those places. And that's something that I really want to just kind of put out there and have people think about. And it's like, we are all connected. We could all potentially be family. We just don't know it because that was taken away from us. True, true. You know, what I appreciate about Senga's work and how it brought everything together, and I think a lot of us can come from this perspective and echo it, is that um, her work is expansive. Her work uh, shows how we as Black people, we as Black bodies, we as Black women have stretched. Um, a lot of her work is about the releasing and the tension. A lot of it is about the relaxing, the stillness, but also the movement. Um, and that is so much a part of our life, but I really, what captured me a lot and what I related to a lot in her work is the stretching. Colonialism, enslavement forced us to stretch and bend in ways that are absolutely unnatural. Black people learn to breathe underwater. We learn to breathe underwater. Colonialism, its point is to drown you, to kill you. Its point is to kill you. Enslavement, its point is to get in your lungs and oppress you from the inside out. And we learn to breathe through that. We learn to breathe with that. We learn to bend in ways. We learn to bend these lungs in ways to find pockets of air to keep breathing. We learn to, to break and to reform. And then we taught our children how to bend where we broke. Um, Senga's work speaks to the, our expansiveness, to the tension that we hold. Hundreds of years of white supremacy in these bodies. Hundreds of years of oppression in these bodies. But also, when you look at Black bodies in Capoeira, when you look at it in breakdance, when you look at Black bodies in swing, when you look at Black bodies in crunk, when you look at Black bodies in full expression, that release of all of that tension exists. Black expression makes, gives us a place to breathe. It is the reason why we learn how to breathe underwater. And to me, Senga's work captured that on so many different levels and in so many different ways. And we do this without thought. We do this without training. We do this because our ancestors taught us to do this, because our deities gave us the magic to do this, because we are so ancient and have always been able to do this. Mm -hmm. So I got a question for Dr. Harding. Um, having had experience both here in the US and having studied in Brazil, understanding that culture, like what is your take on how this idea of blackness transcends borders? Oh, that's a wonderful question, Audrey. And um, I would just like to connect my response to what Lady speech was just saying. Um, my sense is that the experience of coming across the Middle Passage and landing in all of these different spaces throughout the Americas, every country in the Americas at some point in its life experienced slavery, enslaved Africans. And that experience for us meant it created precisely what Lady Speech just talked to us about, created a new <laughs> meaning of the human. And what I mean by that is that, yes, we had to breathe underwater, but we also learned to share breath. There's something in the African American writ large, when I say African American now, I mean the whole Americas and the Caribbean. There's yeah. something in that experience um, that prioritizes the collective, that prioritizes our connection to each other. That is how we have survived these 400 plus years, is recognizing that there is no full meaning of who we are as, as individuals without the community, without the collective. Um, and, and, you know, some of that certainly was already in our traditions in West and Central Africa before we were brought here. 
absolutely a part of those indigenous African understandings of the world. But there's also something about going through this, this fulcrum, this fire of enslavement and figuring out how do you hold on to your humanity when it's then when the attempt of the society that you are in is to destroy it, to, to try to, to rip all that is human out of you. What do you do that keeps you connected to who you really are, keeps you knowing whose you are and who you are? And that's a collective exercise. That's not something that happens on an individual basis. So, and, and from my understanding, my study of Afro-Atlantic religions in Cuba, in Haiti, in Brazil, and absolutely in the African-American context, particularly our Southern um, traditions of Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, all of that is centered around knowing who we are in community and recognizing that we are never alone. Our ancestors are with us, our families are with us, our ori, our God is with us. We're always accompanied in the world. And that's a very interesting understanding of what it is to be human and, and emphasizes our link to everything and everybody who exists in the world. Uh, you just took me to church, so thank you. <laughs> Both of y'all took me to church. Hallelujah. That was amazing. Oh, well, we had, I think we have a question in the chat. It says, um, how was it trying to face your, vulner your vulnerability as Black women working in this space? Anybody want to answer? I'll answer that one. Um, it was actually easier to get it out because it was literally eating me from within. Um, a lot of us on this side are not connected with our mothers, right? So to go back to the Genesis with something like bodies of liberation, we weren't even allowed to be pregnant. You know, at one point we weren't even allowed to carry our own progeny to life. It got sucked out of us, you know? So it is a very big moment to be able to not only carry life and, and bring it forward, but then to, to come out of that state of mind of colonialism to then try to figure out well, where do I go to find out who I am? Because as far as we are concerned, a lot of us think we just originated in Texas and in Denver and in New Hampshire when there are lineages that we can't even trace back because we got lost in the shuffle. So to be able to, to connect right back into that and to be able to not just share it, but to embody it and to be able, be able to tell that story and endure it to the end so that the story gets told. Because as we tell stories, we relive what happened, whether we were there on the boat or underwater. Some of our ancestors came back and are living through us. And a lot of us, we just cannot take a lot of the trauma again. We have reincarnated and we're here again. And, and we're like those ancient spirits, like what in the heck is this? Earth is so ghetto, you know? Because it's like coming back to the same place that they left. Nothing has really changed and history continues to repeat itself. And with that, we learn new lessons and new ways to move forward. Perfectly said. Yeah. I think for me, um, working in this space and um, facing my vulnerability is absolutely necessary at this point in the game. Um, it has to happen. Um, it's hard, uh, but it's also liberating every single time. Uh, I facing it in these public spaces um, allows me to help dismantle the stereotype that black women and black femmes are not human, that we don't feel pain, um, that we're not allowed to be soft or disheveled or broken. Uh, facing the vulnerability in public is embarrassing. Uh, it's necessary. Um, facing the, the vulnerability um, in public as a black woman is isolating. It's absolutely isolating. Um, and it also draws you into, at first it's isolating, and then it draws you into a club of others who choose to live like this and choose to express this way and, and choose to face their vulnerability too. Um, and facing your vulnerability 
in the end is liberation. Um, I think of my grandmother's, I always, I jokingly and unjokingly call both of, and lovingly call both of my grandmother's bitches because that's what they were. They were very mean and very angry and they would cuss you all the way out. Um, and I appreciate that hardness because it made a soft space for me. They weren't allowed to be soft. Uh, I appreciate the bitchiness. I appreciate that men were scared. I appreciate that white men would cow. I appreciate that grown men bow to their feet. I know that this was not cultivated in a nice way. And they were this way because it was necessary in order to protect other aspects of their humanity. So it is necessary for me to be soft in public for them because they could not be. It is necessary for me to be embarrassed and vulnerable in public because they could not be. It's necessary to hold space for the bitch that I am, as well as the goddess and the king and the queen. And also the very soft little me that will always be, and that deserves protection. This is why I love you, Lady Sage. Um, <laughs> perfectly said. Um, that is amazing. Like, I felt that so much. Like, I don't know. I, we, got, we got room for one more question. I'll go into a deep end on that. If anybody wants to ask or, you know, chime in on what we're talking about, please do so. Um, the chat is open. Um, I think we're having a great conversation. This is awesome. This is amazing. Um, so yeah, if you have one more question, please chime in. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about, Audrey? Is, are you good on that? Um, I just kind of want to speak to this idea of vulnerability and just kind of say that like, I think a lot of us, I know my, I'll speak for myself, like we experience that vulnerability pretty much every day. You know, it is a, a constant process. And so um, to do something like this publicly, where we actually get to be thoughtful about how we wish to share these things that we are already going through. Um, to me, it's more of a release than it is uh, an exposure, you know? And it's like, hey, I've been dealing with this silently for so long. And so now I get to, you know, explain what this is about and hopefully you know others can recognize understand and maybe exude a bit more compassion when it comes to the way I and we move through our everyday lives agreed agreed so I don't know we're gonna wrap it up here ladies in a, in a, in a few um I didn't see any other questions, but this was an amazing conversation and you guys had beautiful, I know perfectly beautiful um, insight that I knew you would. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, did you wanna close it out, Audrey? Or? Yeah, so I wanna just give a shout out to everybody who was in the panel. So thank you, Kenya. Thank you, Dr. Harding. Thank you, Lady Speech. Thank you, Sunshine Media for coming out and being a part of this evening. I wanna give a shout out to everybody who was a collaborator with us and helped to create this content that uh, we got to showcase. I wanna thank everybody who came through and watched everything um, and, you know, is participating with us via chat and is probably hopefully having discussions back home. And I wanna thank the Denver Art Museum for giving us this platform and giving us this ability to have this conversation and to put forth these ideas. And hopefully, you know, we will just make somebody's world just a little bit better, a little bit brighter today. <laughs> And I just want to do a couple of more shout outs to the ladies that were performing tonight. Monique Brooks Roberts, the violinist, you were amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Aubrey uh, Martin Fullwood uh, with your dance responses was awesome. You and Sunshine killed that. Um, and of course, Lady Speech, you were amazing. You bring my words to life so perfectly. Um, so I, I'm in forever awe of you. So thank you so much. Uh, I want to do a, a quick plug and shout out to Lawrence and Lammer for hooking mm. up with shirt, black owned clothing company. Um, so shout out to them as well. And yeah. Oh, if we're doing shout outs then, uh, I want to put a shout out to Dr. Rhonda Coleman. Wow. And her, yes, and her business, um, 
mama oh my god mama water am i fucking it up <laughs> she does acupuncture she's amazing she does uh chinese medicine please check her out and that water mama i knew i'd get it um i want to give a shout out to my capoeira crew uh colorado uca for helping me put together the video uh contra mesa grillo preto for uh you know, doing the editing for me on our behalf. Um, if y'all saw something tonight, you're like, man, that's dope. I want to try that out. Ninth in Santa Fe is where we train. You should go check us out. Um, gosh, who else? Everybody who helped contribute music, man. There's just ah, so much. Like, I'm so overjoyed. <laughs> yeah, we have so many people to thank. So we, we thank you, especially Denver Art Museum for um, bringing us on as features. This was an amazing experience. I had so much fun. Um, so thank you to, to the whole team. Um, appreciate you guys and all of this. So yes, I think that is it for the evening, ladies. Thank we you all. We want to thank everybody for chiming in, and we hope you enjoyed this tonight. And thank you for, you know, riding with us on our creative fusion. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. See y'all.